Welcome to our Give Thanks for Simple Blessings project. This is a multimedia project. We've got newsprint that's been decoupage with burlap. Um, we've got the um, raffia metal trim. Um, we've got um, texture crackle. We've got image transfer um, lettering and um, a decorative crackle on top. And this is a really multi-layered thing. It's just rich and beautiful and simple for the season. A lot of stuff to learn and um, I think you'll explore a lot of different mediums when you're watching, so enjoy. Okay, we're going to make this fun project. We're going to use some, some pretty simple wood overlays. We're going to glue them all together. Got a little leaf, extra piece. We're going to use a rope or wire up here, and we're just going to do a multi-dimensional um, or a multimedia piece. So the very first thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and seal our wood with DecoArt's multi-purpose sealer. Um, you can use this for all, all surfaces for a sealer. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we will just prep our surface, brush it on nice and thin, allow it to dry. Make sure you do the back side so you don't have warpage and it protects it from weather. So if you're going to hang this outside, then you'll be all ready to, you'll be all protected from all the elements. All right, I cut a piece of burlap the size of my base piece and I went ahead and ironed it. And where I had creases, I just used a wet paper towel and then just heated the, the water. And then you're just going to pull off these little um, threads on the side and that's going to give you a nice frayed edge. And you want to kind of sneak up on it and do them evenly so that you can kind of see where you're at. Don't do a whole bunch on one side and then um, it has a way of getting away from you. So just go ahead and fray kind of evenly. And we'll see where we get and then I'll trim the edges to, to make them less wonky like that. Okay, we're going to put an even coat of Chalky Paint Whisper. Um, nope, Timeless. Um, this is the 8 ounce, and then they got them now in the 2 ounce sizes, which is a little bit more convenient if you're used to them. But if you do a lot with them, it's good to have the big size. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and get one coat on there, nice and even. Leave your edges brown if you want them that way. And so to leave them brown, what you'll do is you'll sweep away from you. Okay, and go ahead and let that dry. All right, we're going to take some texture crackle and we're going to mix it in with our timeless. And we're going to scrape some of this on the surface. You don't want to do more than about 20% of the color. You just want to tint it just a little bit. And then we're going to also tint some with Whisper, which is a lighter color. So this is a thixotropic medium, meaning that it gets creamier as you blend it. So it gets kind of into a nice creamy, spreadable state. Okay, so what we'll do, scrape off some of that excess and get a bigger palette knife, actually. Oops, that's even tinier. Well, I don't know where my bigger palette knife is. It's right here. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and... Put different piles real flat. So my, I'm not piling it on, I'm just scraping on some some nuances of color. And you can scrape on some of your paint as well in between, just to give it kind of that tuck stucco kind of look. bit of the light here and there. You can afford to go a little bit heavier with this than I usually do because I'm not going to be painting my leaf on this piece. I'm going to paint my leaf on the wood, the cut wood, so I can actually be a little bit kind of more chunky than usual. And the chunkier you go, the better your cracks will be, as long as you didn't put too much paint in it doesn't like to crackle if you have too much paint. Okay, and that leaf will go right there in the middle, so we won't worry about doing too much stuff there. And get some more of the light here and there. Okay, and then 
wipe off your palette knife and let that dry. Okay, while I was waiting for this to dry, I went ahead and based my leaf with a mix of <clears throat> yellow ochre and antique gold. I'm going to go ahead and sand with a little sanding disc. These little discs are kind of cool because with just two discs, you can have um, the roughest grit sand, a lighter, and then there's a finer and another ultra fine. So you can have all of them in one, like, totally um, easy to hang on to little disc. So I'm just going to sand this and then I'll wipe off all my dust. And I just want to take off the, the high points on this. Take Deco Arts Decoupage Medium, and it's a matte finish one. You want matte because we're going to paint on top of it. And I'm going to take a Fall Words image transfer. So that's been printed in reverse with a laser color printer. Um, and everything that isn't white is going to come off onto my piece. And then all of the white will disappear. That's the paper. Um, printers don't actually print in white. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just kind of position it on there, maybe sort of in the middle. I don't think I want this too, too, too bold. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take our giant 4-inch Mod Podge brush, which allows us to get a nice even coat on things and move really nice and quickly. You want just enough of this medium, not too much, not too little. I want to see the white, but I don't want it gunky. And this is image transfer. So I'm not gluing it down. I'm not going to put anything on top of this. I need a little bit more medium. That just right Goldilocks kind of application is what the difference is between successful image transferring and not. It's really a good idea just to do a couple of experiments so that you get an idea for how much. I'll go back and I'll, the neat thing about this big brush is I can go back and just smooth all of it at one time and it just applies. This brush is amazing. The, the shortness and the bulk of this br the bristles is what makes it absolutely awesome. Alright, so now what I want to do is I'm going to get it on there straight. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to apply it. I want to get away from that white edge. I'm going to kind of rub it down. And now I'm going to flip it and I'm going to twist until I get it where I want it. And I should, oh, I'm just within that boundary. That's perfect. Okay, now the key is, is not to um, make it twist when I'm doing this. And now what I want to do is press out all of these, um, all of the wrinkles. And so I'll just smooth it. You can use the back of a spoon anything that doesn't have rough edges. And you really want to get rid of that excess medium. Just kind of squish it out the side there. Anything that stays wrinkled, you'll get a big bunch of white medium. So you want all of your wrinkles out. Okay, now that I've got most of the wrinkles gone, I've got this little flat plastic cap on a paint cubby. I'll just start smoothing everything out. You want to work from the inside out. I'm using pressure. As you can hear, my table is wiggling. Okay, and now I will set this under my blow dryer. I don't want any of the medium to get on top because that will glue the paper down. Super, super, super important. As soon as I feel like I've got good contact everywhere, then I will hit the blow dryer on low and just let it kind of go for a little bit. All right, next I wanna put some of this newsprint on the edge of my board. So I'm going to use the same medium, I'm going to use the matte medium, and I'm just going to apply just a little bit all the way to the edge. And I want it to be all glued down, so I'll scooch it in just a little bit. Alright, so I'll just get that on there pretty nice and straight. Okay, and then we'll do some more. Okay, and 
this is all going to be under the um, under the burlap so this isn't going to be such a, a big deal okay now I'm gonna let that kind of get bubbly a little bit like it is okay so what you'll notice when you're doing the newsprint is that you'll get some little bubbles and I'm just gonna go through and I'll use my little um, handy scraper and I'm just gonna flatten them out I'm not quite dry yet so that's gonna allow the glue to kind of contact and I'm gonna sand these anyway so I don't really care if you don't want any bubbles when you're doing um, Mod Podge or decoupage um, what you can do is you can spray with a, a matte spray on both sides of the paper and that will allow you to have a little bit more control but I'm really gonna want this to look a little bit old world so I really really don't care um, and ultimately that will help me achieve that look so I'll just let that get all nice and dry okay so I'm going to take my rough grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand right on my edge of my wood and what's going to happen is that it will take the edge of my wood off so I don't have to do any trimming and then I'm going to sand to roughen this up and to get rid of any bumps and, and wiggles and stuff like that I don't care if I make the the print um, kind of faded okay now I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber and I'm just going to kind of wash over my edges just don't want them to look all pretty and we'll let that dry okay next we're going to peel off our image transfer paper so we've got this paper face down we're going to scratch through the back of the paper this just helps the water absorb this paper comes in a couple of plies um, it's not just one like layer of paper so you're gonna have to work your way through all of the plies and it's real helpful if you loosen up that top one so then we'll squirt it with some just water and you'll see pretty soon that I'll make an image and we're gonna do quite a bit of water just let it sit on top of there this is also where having your wood um, be sealed is going to be a, a positive thing okay so I let it soak for a little while now what I'm gonna do <clears throat> pardon me is just peel off what I can peel off that just makes it much easier so you don't have to rub through all the layers now I did do a shortcut and you already can see that I've got a little bit of lifting that is real common when you don't let it dry um, overnight so you definitely want to make sure oh that's really cool the glue hardened and it made a little shelf and the, the image is on the glue that's really funny okay so I'll just kind of rub off the big bulk of this let me get a paper towel okay so I'll just paper towel grab just a little bit better start gently especially if you didn't go overnight I just blow dried mine for a long time but I just blow dried so see that little lifting right there go gently and then once you get a layer of uh, paper off then you can go and um, you can go blow dry some more if you've cheated and shortcutted and then that's that top layer isn't that really cool how that's just on there now you'll be able to see when we get done the crackles and the different textures and all of that as well. we am just going to get through all the paper. Okay, so I'll just throw this away. Then I'll spritz. As I remove my paper, I'll let less and less and less, I'll do, use less and less and less water. Okay, I'm going to do one more layer of crackle. And this is with a new DecoArt product that is called... Um, crackle glaze so this is going to go right on top and I want to leave it really 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 thick you don't want to overwork your crackle I want this just to be like a like a teacup glaze crack kind of thing so I'm just really just picking it up and laying it down I love 
love to use crackle mediums. They're a good thing to experiment with, so don't feel like you've got to go ruin your project. You know, don't ever do this right over, you know, a seminar piece or something. I always do a little test. So now I've got crackle underneath, and I'm going to have crackle on top. It's kind of exciting. I don't think you can ever have enough depth in projects. And the crackle mediums allow a lot of depth. Okay. Nice and even everywhere. Not super worried about bubbles. Okay, now I'll let that dry. While I'm waiting for things to dry, I'm putting together my, um, my new brush dryer. This is a really cool little gadget. And so you just put the feet in there like that. And then you just pop that puppy. Let's see, it's the front. Pop that puppy on there. Okay. And then what you do is when you wash your paint brushes and you've got them sopping wet, you can just put them right on in there. And because these are like a little squeegee thing, even the thinnest, that's the finest brush I have, even the finest brushes will hold. Everything drips down into this little tray and you have perfect drying. You don't have any ruined brushes um, because when your water runs back into your ferrule, that's what ruins your brushes. So you can just keep them there till they're dry. They drip in the tray. There's no muss, no fuss. And it's just absolutely a perfect, um, a perfect tool. Oh, and I want to point out, we have some super wide um, ones over here. So you can even get your very, very extra large um, things inside there. And normally you would never be able to do that. And these are the biggest victims when it comes to having a lot of water running back into the ferrule. Then the glue softens and then the head falls out. So yeah, you can pop those right on in there. Excellent, excellent. Somebody was thinking, right? I'm going to use my um, Ghost Rider, which has got a white ceramic lead, a gray ceramic lead, and a roller ball that doesn't have any ink in it all on board, as well as an eraser that won't smudge your paint. Okay, and I'm going to sketch on some um, veins on my leaf. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of texture glass. And it's not going to make a very, very fine line. I just kind of want it sitting on the top. What this is going to do is give us a little three-dimensional effect after we paint the leaf. So I'm just kind of picking it up and laying it on there. I do want it a little prettier than that. Texture glass dries perfectly clear. Okay, just get that done and allow that to dry. I've got a lot of drying things going on today. Really like the, the layered effect of multimedia projects though. Okay, I'll let that dry. Okay, we're going to dry rub on our leaf <clears throat> with this big old dome brush. And we're just going to kind of make a, a pattern through the middle of the leaf. Dry rubbing, you want to rub off all the extra excess paint on your brush. Kind of let that dry. Okay, we'll pick up a little bit more. Just brighten that puppy up, give it a little glow. Carry it over. OK, 
Okay, and then we'll start working on some of the other colors. So we'll go into the olive green. Okay, we'll do just a little bit here and there. This color will be kind of bigger than the other colors because then we'll, what we'll do is we'll get gradually darker green. So we'll do a receding kind of color. Do it in different places. Definitely want that to fade out though. Go into another brush. Start building on our orangey colors with peaches and cream first. So there's two ways that you can do this. You can start with your dark and kind of work its way out or start with the light and then get darker gradually. Either is acceptable. Okay, pull those two. Then the green is dry, so now we'll go into Hauser Dark. And we'll get out there on the outer edge. And maybe a little more Hauser Dark. to our persimmon. And we'll fold back over. These are labor, um, paper towel intensive um, techniques here. So now you see we're getting that nice fall leaf look. In the meantime, I've been checking on my crackle medium and that's looking real good too. switch to a little bit smaller dome brush for my evergreen color. Pull that in. You can use this um, technique for leaves on just any, any leaf, uh, cut out or not cut out. Um, just makes a really nice little universal leaf technique. Okay, that one had the, um, the green on it, so I want to go back into my yellow and brighten that up. And you can decide if your yellow hasn't faded, then you don't need to. Go back into the green. And really just kind of kick, kick those edges nice and deep. And then into that persimmon. And the same thing on that, just really intensify. So now we're going to take our Q-tips, which are super sharp, pointy, and very, very hard um, cotton swabs, and I'm going to just spit on it, and I'm going to peel off the paint, and that will come out clear and give it that kind of, um, it'll have the, the color from beneath and give it a 3D effect. Okay, so here's where my crackle is at. Can you see it? See the really big stuff down here? That's really cool. I've got a little bit where I got a little bit fine. You gotta make sure if you want evenness that you um, take care of that by paying attention to it. I'm, I'm gonna let this dry. I did go ahead and blow dry it and it worked perfectly. So, and I even did it on high. Okay, so I'm going to finish drying. I, I suspect this is still wet over here. Finish drying it and then I'll antique it. In the meantime, I want to go ahead and use the um, chalky cream wax to antique the edge of my 
poured here. So I'm just going to do it like your shining shoes. Just put it a little bit on the edge of my cloth. And just antique all the way around the edges. Well, I'm not liking how my, my veins came out, so I'm just going to go ahead and put some green faded veins. Real washy. So that idea, it was not such a great idea. Okay. Just get a little vein going on. And then let's go ahead and spatter using the um, White Wonder brush and our dark green and a heavy handle and something or another. In this case, I'll use a, a um, palette knife. And then we'll go ahead and spatter with the persimmon. And we'll spatter with the bright yellow. Okay, in the meantime, I've sprayed my center surface with this um, tacky spray. And then I'm going to position my burlap. This is going to be fairly instant contact permanent, so. Press until you're sure you got it. Okay, and I tried to do it so that I could um, not do all the edges. Okay, and that leaves me holes for other stuff. I'm gonna go take this someplace else. All right, I'm gonna use this um, fur brush that's real soft but has good pressure to antique some of my crackle. And I can wipe that back, back off if I don't want it all over, and it'll be in the crack. Let's get a paper towel. So I can wipe the brown away, but I can keep it in the crack itself. So this brush is pushing it in, and it's just a really nice, wide, fluffy, soft brush, but not bristly. I don't want bristles. Bristle, bristle, bristle. Okay, so. So we can go in and we can enhance some of our cracks here and there, and then wipe it back. That looks awesome. Okay, now I'll go in and apply just a little bit of the antiquing um, wax to my leaf, just to tone that back and make everybody kind of belong to the same family. Okay, and then that's going to go right on there like that. And I love how that crackle just enhanced everything. I can go back in if I want to and I can deepen if I don't feel like I've got my corners strong enough. So see how that's just framing everything. Lovely. Okay, I want to deepen my shading on the corners with some soft black. If you have residual stickiness from your spray, go ahead and um, mist the board with some matte spray, and that'll take the stickiness away. Okay, so I'm going to wait until I kind of just get everything done, and then I'll worry about that. Yeah, I like the, I like the corners just that little bit heavier. Apparently I'm sticking my hairs to my project. Okay, and we put our board on top. I got our leaf on there and that's starting to look kind of cute. And then we'll go into our corners and just deepen those as well to lift that away. Oops, go the other way. And that just really helps. That's a little bit much. So I'll back it off with a brush. Come in and then just maybe 
rub that away. If somebody's not floating at all, I'm just base coating. And that just lets us have a little bit more anchor on there. I think that really adds to it. Let's give our little leaf on that red. Whoops, no, that's too watery. We need to go into a reddish color. We'll strengthen the red on there with um, Heritage Brick. The orangey color. Just deepen that. Just a little float. Yeah. And then I think let's go ahead and give ourselves just a little bit of Heritage Brick in, in here. And maybe we could bring a little bit of that out. Just a little bit of color out there. It's a little bit kind of flat. Just a little, so I'll rub that back just a touch. Okay, now let's see what that looks like. Okay, and I have stenciled words as if we don't have enough words right here. Some stencil words that I'm not quite sure what color I want to do them, so I'll figure it out. Okay, I'm doing all over color on the letters with a mix of the Heritage Brick and the Soft Black. And then I'm going back up the bottoms with the Soft Black. And then I'll switch to brushes and go Heritage Brick on the top. Kind of draw that down. Okay, yeah, I kind of like that. It's bold enough to see. And I'll work my way around. Okay, we're going to take thinned soft black and we're going to make our drop shadow. It needs just a little beefing up and I think the drop shadow will do just the trick. And we want that thin, we don't want to take away from those letters. All on. just that little bit of bulk. Okay. 